One year ago today, police swarmed this apartment complex in Commerce City. At the time, no one knew why. We only knew five people were dead inside. As the days passed, we learned there was now a public health crisis concerning fentanyl. And to this day, the drug is still tearing families apart. One family forever altered after that day, the Rodriguez family. They lost Karina Rodriguez, a daughter, mother, and sister. She leaves behind two kids. The family sat down with 90s reporter Darius Johnson to grieve and share memories one year later. Grief never settles. You always hear like, oh, they were bright, they lit a room, but she really did. Like you would hear her before you saw her. And love never fades. <laughs> As time passes, fond memories with Karina Joy Rodriguez feel like yesterday. It's hard when you talk to somebody every day, all day, <laughs> to just go about your life like normal. Life hasn't been normal since Feliz Sanchez Garcia and Malaya Rodriguez lost their baby sister a year ago. I think it's been probably the fastest but longest time ever. Like I, it's really hard to describe because it feels like just yesterday. The memories this past year aren't easy when Feliz and Malaya look at their sister through her children, whether that's 11 year old Josiah or 15 month old Aria, who you may hear in the background throughout this story. She's just the funniest little baby and she's so happy. Karina and her boyfriend, Sam Marquez, aren't here to witness these moments. I talked to her that night. Um, I talked to her while she was at dinner, she, while she was waiting for her table. It was Karina and Sam, his sister Cora, and her husband, Berto Arroyo Ledesma. And that was pretty much the last time I talked to her. Shortly after, they went to Karina and Sam's apartment in Commerce City. Stephanie Monroe and Jennifer Cunningham came over to have a good time. Sadly, the five inside 307 had no idea this would be their final sunset. We're used to texting each other in the middle of the night and I hadn't heard from her and it was weird. Still, there was no need to worry until Sam, Karina and Cora's phones rang and rang. So I called Sam's mom and she was crying and hysterical. All she said was, they're all cold, they're all blue. Okay, what is going on there? One, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like cocaine on the on the shelf. We got on 104th closer to her apartment and I could see the ambulance, the, the police, and I just, I freaked out. Commerce City lead detective Rich Rodriguez was on call. I remember uh, arriving on, on scene. It was kind of chaotic at the time. There were people just everywhere. Everyone was just freaking out and like we were all just like screaming at them and saying like, what's going on? What's going on? Like, are they okay? Is my sister okay? And he's like, nobody up there is okay. A scene so chaotic, the district attorney, Brian Mason, even showed up. It looked like a mass murder scene. There were five bodies strewn about this apartment. I've never seen anything like that. Um, it appeared that they basically um, dropped where they stood. One survivor, Cora Marquez, Sam's sister, thought they were sleeping for the last 13 hours. My sister just woke up. Sam and Cora's sister, Selena, found them and called 911, but no one knew what happened inside apartment 307. The evidence showed lines of white powder on glass mirrors. And, and that they had snorted it. This device told investigators what they needed to know. So these five people thought that they were taking cocaine that night and the cocaine was laced with fentanyl and they died almost immediately. Now the hunt was on to find the dealer. I could tell you that the first 48 hours of my mind, I didn't sleep because my main objective was I need to find out who sold them this. For five months, investigators reviewed hundreds of hours of video retraced steps, developed suspects, and served 11 search warrants, then heartbreak on September 14th. There just simply was not enough evidence to charge anyone with this crime. This news didn't sit well with Karina's mother, Debbie Garcia. I was sick for days. I just, you know, I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, it's, it's like, why, why could they not There has to be something. There has to be something, you know, there has to be something. Why? There's not enough evidence. I think everyone was frustrated. And there's still some frustration in me because again, I haven't been able to close this case and will I ever be able to close the case? Probably not. Um, so I carry that with me. Debbie doesn't have much hope the case will ever be solved due to what investigators need to prove. I know there probably won't be any justice for my daughter. Maybe, 
maybe not. I would need to prove that that person sold the drugs that were laced with the fentanyl that killed these five people. She knows the person who sold the drugs is still out there. They know who they are, and, and no matter what, they're, go they're gonna have their day. I call it murder. I, I call it murder. That's what the family calls it, but they continue to remind people their loved ones were poisoned because they thought they were taking cocaine. I'm still waiting for her to walk through my door. She would always let herself in with her key and scare me sometimes as she walked in. What remains at the top of mind? Karina's name, memories, and those she left behind. If you know our sister personally, I mean, it just can't be a negative thing. Something positive has to come from this because she was so she was so amazing. <clears throat> the family couldn't sit back and wait for charges. They started to Google Karina's name and became worried about what her two kids would see one day. That anger gave them the energy to fight for House Bill 1326. It's a bill meant to strengthen the penalties for dealers. On, in April of last year, Feliz and Malaya went to the Capitol bearing their sister's name to share their story. It was like our sister's story made <laughs> such big news that it had to have a purpose. In May of last year, that bill was signed into law. And while progress was being made on the state level, the investigation into what happened to the five inside that apartment was slow going. I have to say I was with the three of them yesterday, Debbie, Malaya, and Feliz, and I gave each of them a hug. And every time you see them, every time you talk to Malaya, who's only 22 months apart from Karina, they were so close, she can never say a word without breaking down and crying. And you just feel so bad for this family. And I just have to say it's remarkable to see how they've really turned their pain into passion and purpose when it comes down to preventing this from happening to someone else. So there was one person that did survive that night, and there was a baby in the house too that was unharmed. You got to speak to that one person who survived. Yeah, um, the baby is the 15-month-old Aria, who you heard in the background throughout the story. They're all loving on her since mm -hmm. she lost both of her parents. Um, I had a chance to speak with Cora Marquez. Um, you'll hear more from that tonight. Seven people were inside that apartment. Five of them died. Karina's baby, Aria, survived, and so did Sam's sister, Cora Marquez. She lost her brother, her husband, and her friends that night. She later lost her sister that called 911 that day. She found them all. She now breaks her silence with me, and I have to say it's one of the hardest interviews that I've ever done. That story is tonight on 9 News at 9 and 10. That was a really heartbreaking story. I think we all remember that morning, and it has pushed for so much change, even at the state level. We're seeing a lot of legislation now happening. Every time you think about it, it gives you chills. You think about the headline of five people and you think back to the scene, you think back to everything that we started to learn after it, and you continue to think about these families. And I get chills every time I think about it because it's so heartbreaking, but I think you need people to be able to warn others and try to protect others, and that's exactly what they're doing so no one else has to feel this pain. Absolutely. We'll be watching your story tonight at 9 and 10. Darius, thank you.